Good morning. Uh, this is Faith of Faith and Books, and I'm going to do a pretty quick uh, May is for Magazines. And I'm looking at McClure's Magazine, Volume 7, uh, 1896. So uh, previously I said I was going to focus on the woman journalist Ida Tarbell, who, by the way, I was watching Jeopardy the other night, and they were doing reruns from some of the great episodes of, of uh, Jeopardy. And I think this might have been about 15 years old, but one of the questions was about Ida Tarbell. And I knew the answer, Standard Oil. Um, but anyway, what is Standard Oil? But anyway, I was gonna focus on her, but thumbing through this, I could not resist this lady. So this is from July 1890, uh, 1896 volume. But apparently this woman who wrote this, the article, Annie S. Peck, uh, look what she did. She uh, climbed the Matterhorn and uh, she tells about it. And apparently she is a well-known woman that I, I think I may have vaguely heard of her, but you know, from the deep recesses of my mind, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't really know much about her. So I looked her up on, on trusty Wikipedia and she was interesting. She was kind of similar to Ida Tarbell. She didn't marry. She she did get an education, though. Um, I think she tried to get into Harvard, and they didn't. Was it Harvard? I forget. She tried to get into some prestigious um, university, and they, they rejected her on the basis of gender. But then when she was a little older, she had moved to Michigan, and the University of Michigan had started taking women. So she um, So she did go. And she got, uh, I think again, she got a master's like our Ida Tarbell um, did in uh, classics. And so she did teach at Purdue University and Smith College, maybe later. She did write some, but then she got the travel bug. She went to Europe and she started to climb mountains. She got really interested in mountain climbing. This was very early on in that part of her life. Um, pretty much she devoted the rest of her life to travel and adventure. And what she really became famous for later in the early 1900s was climbing mountains in Peru and South America. And then after the plane, after people started flying uh, airplanes, I guess this was in the 30s, uh, she, uh, 20s or 30s, not sure, uh, she flew around the world. She was, I think, the first woman to fly around the world, um, you know, on a commercial <laughs> plane. Um, or various planes um, to, to prove how safe um, flying was. So, so she was quite a character um, and it's, it's a very interesting article. Uh, apparently she got into trouble um, because she didn't wear a skirt when she was mountain climbing. She liked to just wear knickerbockers, she called them. Um, and apparently the uh, press made a big deal out of that one. Um, so uh, uh, she, she really did seem like quite a character and the story is quite interesting and well told. I always think mountain climbing is kind of a weird thing to me because it's like you have to have money and then you travel somewhere and you hire people to do a really dangerous thing with you and you get all the credit and the poor, you know, the, the poor natives there, um, you don't get any, you know, they get a, you know, they might get a footnote um, and they're the ones that are keeping you from danger and, you know, your own foolhardiness and everything. I always think it's kind of like a, I don't know, it always, uh, in my mind, I put it together with sort of safari hunting or something where it's just sort of a, a privileged thing. I hate to think in those terms, but that's how it's always struck me. <laughs> but she, so she kind of gives her guide credit. She says, you know, I was safe because I had these two really experienced guides and they really helped me. There was only one time where she felt like she was really in danger. Mostly it was just a very, uh, an enormous physical endeavor and quite thrilling. She does go into how many people die. In fact, you know, she was a woman who did, but she wasn't the first woman and in fact, it was sort of the kind of seemed like it was the new thing for people to do because when she was there, they they met two other women from another country uh, who were also um, doing climbing lots of mountains, and one of them, in fact, died two weeks later in a rock slide. So it was dangerous. It was definitely dangerous. 
um, you know. So, uh, but she tells it. She tells the story very well. Let's see. I should give you just a. What time is it? It's five. I'm, I'm into five minutes. Okay. Um, uh, I should have thought of something. Well, let me just read the first paragraph to you. How's that? So it's A Woman's Ascent of the Matterhorn by Annie S. Peck. Have I ever said her name? I haven't said her name yet. Annie Smith Peck was her name. Um, it was early in the 80s that my attention was first called to the Matterhorn by hearing Dr. David Jordan, now president of Le Leland Stanford University, describe his ascent of that mountain. He told a tale so terrible that while my spirit was fired with a determination to see this wonderful rock pyramid, if ever I went to Europe, I concluded that I should be satisfied with beholding it from below without risking my life in its ascent. There was, however, a slight mental reservation in this decision, and when in 1885 I first saw this magnificent rock towering above me, I was seized with an ir irresistible longing to attain its summit. It does indeed look rather formidable, yet to one who has a taste for rock climbing, no other mountain seems so inviting. But alas, $50 is a large sum to spend on a single, day, single day's pleasure, especially with a protracted stay abroad still in view. Unluckily, the idea of reimbursing myself by a lecture or a magazine article had not then dawned upon me. So I reluctantly turned my steps onward, cherishing the determination that someday I would come again and fulfill my heart's desire. So anyway, she does reach that day. She talks about how she has to wait for two weeks for the weather to clear and they finally decide that they're gonna um, take off and go. It's kind of funny because they're traveling for several hours and then they get to this inn. <laughs> and they eat at the inn. So is that like, you know, just struck me as odd. And then, uh, and then they ascend further and they get to this hut where you have to sleep on this big board and, and more people come in at all hours. So it's very uncomfortable, so you don't get a lot of sleep. And then they started off, you know, really early morning, like one or two in the morning, um, climbing by the, by the moonlight or the starlight. And then dawn comes. And there are, she talks about the different, you know, when it, when it's icy and, you know, why you have to pick certain times of day to climb because some days um, it's slippier, the, uh, some uh, portions of the day are slipperier than others and uh, some times of the day there's more likely to be a rock slide, that sort of thing. And she, she goes into detail, which I don't understand about the ropes, the way she was attached to her guides so that they could uh, prevent her from falling. She talks about all the people who have died in the ascent and where they're buried down in the uh, village of Zermatt. Um, she, let's see, she really gives a lot of credit to her guides, which is good. Um, she goes on about, oh, when they got to the summit, they, uh, that was like a, a really exhilarating thing and the, the beautiful view, although she, she makes some cracks about how it's really not about the view to uh, rock climbers, it's about the thrill of the ascent, right? And then they come back down again and she's very proud of herself for having done it. So, and so she turned her life into one of um, climbing mountains and traveling and then lecturing and writing about it. And she lived to be, she was from, I think, Rhode Island. She lived to be, I forget, uh, I mean, she, she got up there, she was in her 80s or something. I think she did her last mountain climb when she was 81. So she was quite a character and I found it really interesting. So I couldn't pass her by. I'm going to uh, focus on Ida Tarbell uh, on Wednesday. So, so that's your McClure's um, for today. So I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you later, bye.